I got one. <laughs> How they fight on that tackle? Any good? <laughs> it's a little funny. I don't <laughs> Now you got a 12 pound leader just above the jig head, uh -huh. so you can grab the leader and, and flip like, the fish in without breaking it. Like. Flounder fishing, Belmar, New Jersey, Shark River. I'm Bob Murray, Delaware Valley Outdoors. Stay tuned, it's going to be a good one. All right, first cast, there first fish. You got a bite, Bob? <laughs> a little too light on the drag there. Yeah. Oh. There he is. Let me know if we need the net. I think so. That's a nice fish. Yeah. And that's the thing, I mean, that's a nice fish any other time, but with the limit up the way it is, it's just a, a good release fish, and that's right. what, what this fish... Oh, oh, good. I released it. Yeah. <laughs> that was good. That's what this fishery's becoming. It's a catch and release deal, you know? Hey. But it's Steve, a ton of fun. Steve Horvath is with me today. We're down at Belmar, New Jersey in the Shark River. Yep. And we're fluking. We're fluking. And Steve, we're, usually don't, you know, when you ask me to come down, he said, bring a trout rod. I'm there. A trout rod for fluke? Oh, yeah. <laughs> What's the story with that? Oh, it's just fun. Uh huh. What happens is, is it becomes a deal where finesse catches you more fish you know instead of a big heavy clunky tackle we always use mm -hmm. it's mostly release fishing right switch over to lighter tackle and what we found is we're catching a lot more fish you know where we caught you know a dozen two dozen fish in a day now we're catching 30 40 50 you know yeah. and as you can see the action's pretty quick I mean <laughs> yeah and on his light rods it's a lot of fun yep it's a lot of I think fun. we're gonna make another drift here okay and that's the thing we're gonna we're just waiting for the, the tide to push us through all this and then just make another drift along these areas exactly and this is something anybody can do you know virtually anybody can come down here rent a boat for the day some light tackle you know they'll set you up at the tackle shop and you can just go out and have a ball take the kids out it's safe right right you're not you're not out on the ocean it's cheap yeah and it, yeah relatively inexpensive to yep. when, you, when you when you look at it Exactly. And every now and then we do catch a big one. Yeah. And then that's when we can catch that and then we can flay it and then we have some, some, some flounder. Yeah, some stuffed flounder. We're down here and I say that it's the Shark River. Tell us exactly uh, where we are and what do we have here. Well, we're down here in Belmore, New Jersey on the Shark River, like you said. The, the misnomer is, you know, I mean, it is Shark River. There, right. there is a little bit of a river here, right. but most of it's a back bay. It's nice protected water. It's shallow. You know, people from coming from Pennsylvania like us, right down 195 to the end. You hit to where you have to make a left or right, you make a left, and you're there. And you're there. You know? And you know what? We have pretty good wind today, but it's not so bad. No. No, it's not. You know? And now, the, now, explain the Shark River going out into the ocean. Now, what what, what do we have there? Yeah. The well, what we have is... Uh, Shark River Inlet, which is only, I mean, we're not even a mile inland here. We're probably three quarters of a mile inland from the ocean. You know, the fish don't have real far to migrate to get in here. And uh, at different times of the year, there's everything in here. Porgies, spots. I mean, most of the time of the year, there's something to fish for. So it's almost like fishing in the ocean, except you're, you're, you get this protected uh, exactly. cover. Exactly. You know, there. Now, this is a secret. Yeah, okay. Okay. But uh, there are times when we catch bass up to 20, 30 pounds back here at night. Striped bass. Yes. You know, they come in here, they're feeding on the bunker and stuff. And it can be good. It's, it's real hit and miss, to be honest with you. But when you're here and it's on, I mean, we're sitting here talking to the guy at the tackle shop. We're talking to Bob Matthews, who lies less than most fishermen. <laughs> but... Uh, 
I mean, he had a, a little girl yesterday catch a 49-pound striper out here, you know, off the beach. You know, we're on a secret spot here. <laughs> yeah, I see you. <laughs> Hello, America. <laughs> the spot we're fishing over here is, is called the tennis courts. Okay. Obviously, obviously we have tennis courts. courts. Right there. The deal is you normally start your drift or end your drift, depending on which way the tide's going, right by the outfall pipe. And what happens is you'll, you'll drift either back out toward the inlet or an incoming tide, you'll drift back this way. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times what you do is you stay 75, maybe 100 feet off. There's like a little, little deep area, almost like a channel that uh -huh. comes back here. Uh -huh. And what will happen is you'll be able to tell where the fish are and mark where the fish are, not with a buoy, mm -hmm. but by which park bench the fish are near. <laughs> okay, so you just look over there and say, okay. This exactly. Is and then just, just hang it out. Watch. Yep. But the tennis courts is a spot that, that is generally good at higher water. Mm -hmm. You know, a little, little high water, maybe halfway out, halfway in or more. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's just a good spot. We catch a lot of fish back here. Now and then a real big one, too. So. That's what we want. Again, we're not very far right from, the, from where no, we are. No, we're within a half mile from, yeah. The, yeah. from the marina. So if we uh, run out of bait, we can run right back in there. Yeah. Hey! Oh, he nailed that one. You know you are absolutely killing him <laughs> on that little special rig we're using with that chartreuse twister on there. And don't think for a minute that I'm not about to put one on. <laughs> I gotta tell you, this is a lot of fun. I yeah. enjoy this. Oh, man. Look at that rod bend. Oh, come here. That's it. Now these fish here obviously are not keeper fish. We have right. to go to what, 18 inches 18 now? 18 inches for a keeper fish. Right. So we'll, we'll probably go through an awful lot of fish to get the, the keepers. Well, that's the good news. Right. We should catch dozens of them, Bob. Right. That's All the, day. That's the most, the fun part is actually the catching of the fish here. Yeah, the, yeah if we get the 18 inches, that's fine. Yep. But uh, to catch these fish like this, I mean, that was a good little hit there. Yep. Again, I'll turn around and I'll say, okay. We're at the second park bench. Okay. <laughs> so we'll drift by the second park bench. And that's a, that's a big secret to it. You know, mark the spot, go back to the spot, because these aren't solitary fish. Once you've found one, you've generally found a bunch of them. And they're slippery. Look at the color on that fish. Now, if you look at that, the, the fish here, I mean, they really mimic the bottom. Yes. If you're on a sand bottom, they'll be lighter and have more spots. On a mud bottom, they'll tend to be darker. It just models the, the bottom. Yep, exactly. Models the bottom. Very well disguised fish. Yeah. Divers tell me that they have a hard time seeing them. Really? Yep. All right. <laughs> he walloped that one. Oh yeah. So you'll notice, Bob, what I did was you caught the fish, we drifted another 25 feet, didn't catch a fish, and we're coming right back to the exact same spot. So we just mark it on the, the benches there, we're, exactly. we're giving some sort of stationary yep. spot. And what you could do is you could triangulate it. We're off of this bench, straight off of a water tower or a big tree, so you have two different reference points to come back to it. Because you don't want to throw out a buoy marker because that lets all the other fishermen know where they're at. <laughs> Like you said, once you find uh, one or two, you know that there's going to be a bunch in that yeah, area and, and yep. just, keep, just keep working that area. Yep, the flounder or winter, fl uh, summer flounder, mm -hmm. you know, they're, they're a school fish. I think you got grass there. Yeah, that's what I got. Yeah. And what happens is as soon as you get grass on there, you have to reel it up and get the grass off because, well, flounder don't like salad. No. They're meat eaters. No. Yeah, that's true. You don't want to keep that on there. Right. But now we know that there's fish between the outfall pipe and the first bench. Yeah. And we'll do that drift a couple times, and you'll catch the ones that are cooperative. Mm -hmm. Then you'll run out of fish. Move a little bit more, find more fish. <laughs> hey! Hey! Let's <laughs> get a little bend in that rod there, my friend. <laughs> uh, we got the bendo going on here. Ordinarily, if your rod bends like this, you would think you got a whale. Right. <laughs> now, this is the first one that we've caught on the top hook. It's a little better fish. Yeah. Now, we're not lifting them with the rod. Get a good hold on them. 
That's better fish there. Yeah, better fish. Probably 16 inches would have been a keeper a couple years ago. Now it's uh, it's brood stock. Right. You know? And they have come back so much from, from years ago when it was pretty well dusty. There are lots of them. Yeah. There really are. Well, let's toss this one back. Now that one was on the top hook on Achilles. So let's uh, let's rebate. See what happens. There you go. Got a bite. <laughs> got a little bite. Now this is crazy, Bob. Top hook again. Yeah. These fish are supposed to live on the bottom, right? Right. That's part of the rig, you know? Little guy. Yeah. Again, hooked on the outside of the mouth, you know? Nice, safe catch and release. Yeah, that's an important thing, too, that, that we're, not, we're not deep hooking them or anything like yeah, that. Yeah, and, and the other thing is, if you do deep hook them, uh, cut the hook off. Just cut it. Yeah, don't try to. You know, the hook will rust out. Fish will live. It'll get bigger. It'll spawn. It'll reproduce. You know, I see a lot of guys digging with pliers down the fish's mouth and stuff like that. It's not really the right thing to do. You know, it is a, a resource, it is a renewable resource, but only if you take care of it. Whoa. Got a bite there. <laughs> Little one? Top hook. <laughs> Top hook? Give them options. There we go, come here. Now we switched areas, Steve. What do we have in this area that we're in now? Well, this is an area that is a secret. Okay. okay. It's called Sea Dock. Sea Dock. Yes, the dock has a giant sea sign on it. It'll let you know where it's, it's at. It's a then. big C, <laughs> letter C. And what it is is the bottom is generally smooth here. And as you're drifting over it, you'll feel a little rough spot, and then it drops off about six or seven feet, and then it comes up again. And generally, right near the, whoa, right near the rough spot, uh -huh. we'll tend to catch a fish. Nice fish. Nice fish. Yeah. Nice fish. That didn't take long. Nope. And we didn't get in trouble for leaving the fish. Nope. And we got another one. Remember, sea dock, it's a secret. Oh, he got off. Oh. <laughs> I'll get another one. This is tough fishing. Steve, while we're, we're, having, we're having a good time here, but talk about how we're actually setting the hook on these fish. We're not slamming them. Yeah, and you can't with this light line. It's more of a sweep type of set. Mm -hmm. You feel the fish, you gotta kind of feed them a little bit. Mm -hmm. And I actually think the, the little bit of of action we're giving the rod actually makes them grip on the, to it stronger, you know? Kind of helps them make it eat it. And, you know, you let the fish have it and you pretty much let them pull you down a little bit and you just you just lift the rod tip. It's not a violent hook set. We're using light line, six pound test. Right, yeah. We're saltwater fishing with six pound test. Yeah, most people <laughs> they would never think of it. Exactly. That way. You know, we're using six pound line, we're using a very light leader on these uh, jig heads and stuff, and we'll show everybody how to tie the rigs because it's crucial how you tie these rigs. Okay? Yep. The leader, 10 pound test, no more than 12. Any heavier, it creates a drag in the water, you need to use a bigger jig head. Uh huh. Okay? And so that's. All the tackle is matched to the, the, the yes. weight of the line that we're yes. using. Yes. And this is not something everybody's doing. We're getting in big trouble for showing this. <laughs> And the people that are fishing this technique, you will see them out here catching double, triple, quadruple, what everybody else is doing. You know? Yeah, I tell you what, I mean, when the usual flounder fishing is with the, you know, the heavier sinker on the bottom and just, you know, yeah. heavy line, heavier line anyway. Yep. And even when we go to a more traditional rig, you know, with the sinker, leader and stuff, we're only using a number two hook. That's not a 2-0, it's a two. Which is a it's, a, it's a small hook. It's a walleye hook, yeah. basically, or a steelhead hook. Yeah. 
And what's happening is still 10, 12 pound test leader. Okay, maybe a little heavier sinker because we have to get down there. But that's it, you know, not a whole lot of heavy stuff. You know, and I gotta tell you, we've caught six, eight fish so far and we haven't been fishing for a half hour. I, no, no, it's been, you know, we've got the rest of the day to go. Woo! <laughs> Look at that rod bend. <laughs> Look at that rod. Bait. I seem to have a bite. Yeah. Yeah. Nice fish there. Yeah. Again, not a giant, but we got such light tackle. Yep. There he goes. <laughs> I'll be seeing you. I don't even think it's a keeper. No. It's a strong fish, though. Yeah. Okay. I think he's just about tired. Again, we're grabbing the leader, not the main line, because you're only using six pound test. Now that's a much better fish. Yeah. Fat. I wonder if he's worth measuring. What? Eh, well, we've got the cooler right here. Let's see. Yep, he's not even close. <laughs> he's not even and that's a nice fish. <laughs> Look at that guy. Look at that. Love the bolt colors on him. Yep. Just yep. He is beautiful. Well, let's get him back and get another one. Get another spot. You got one? Nah, I think it's. I think it's grass. Yeah. This spot's called the party boats. <laughs> Why would that be? Um, <laughs> we're drifting under the bow of the Golden Eagle as we speak. <laughs> and uh, it's a good spot. There's usually some fish here. Um, you have to watch if there's a lot of boat traffic. You really don't want to be here around these boats. Right. You know. But if boat traffic's not too bad, a lot of times you can pick up some fish. And we drift real close to the pilings, just about right under the boats. And we are right basically there. Oh yeah, yep. Now and what holds uh, the fish here, Steve? Is, is it the bottom or is it just because of the big boats? It's a good holes? hard bottom spot, but yeah, you touched on it. The boats are constantly going in and out, big propellers, lots of horsepower, and they're making holes and the fish live in the, you know, they kind of lay in the little holes, you know? There might be hope for you after all as a fisherman. I might learn something. Yeah, you're getting this stuff. And we're pulling drag here. That's a nice one. I, I got a bite. <laughs> Again, party boats. <laughs> Hello. Ah, we've got the rare Foul-hooked flounder. <laughs> Which probably means I missed him because I have no bait on the top hook. And absolutely no control over the fish. There we go. Reel him in vertically here. I got him. Okay. Oh! I had him. Just show this fish here. Look at how darker he is. Darker bottom than the, than the other fish. There's some muscles on the bottom here, a lot of rock, darker bottom, different color fish. Yep, much darker than the other yep. ones we had. And again, there you go. party boats. <laughs> okay, we've moved again. Okay, now where are we? We're at a spot that's called in front of APs. APs, okay, yep. that would be? APs Marina. APs We're right Marina. in front of APs. <laughs> it's a good spot. Um, it's a good number spot up here. And basically what we're fishing is, there's a kind of a, an island uh, that sticks out between the bridges here. And as the sand on the island drops off, the fish are out here. And there's a little bit of an eddy, mm -hmm. stuff like that. Um, it's not always a big fish spot, but it's usually a good number spot. You know, and one of the things that when we're fishing here is, what we're gonna let dictate is, 
How long we're going to stay here depends on how bad the grass is. If you have a lot of grass, you probably want to get out of the area. You're not going to fish effectively. But it's, like I said, definitely a good spot. Sometimes to the left is better. Sometimes to the right a little bit more is better. So you just got to move around a little bit. Right. And now we're, we're just east of the Route 71 and Route 35 bridges here. So we're closer to the ocean. We're definitely not a half mile from the ocean. No. I mean, we're close. Yeah. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful down here. Oh yeah, nice scenery. You know, and added bonus, the wind's coming out of the north right now. We're in the lee of the wind. Right. No wind. There's usually yeah. somewhere to get out of the wind. All we need is a fish. Now, Steve, the, the flounder season, uh, there's, you got winter flounder and then you have the regular summer flounder. Right. Um, now, how long does this season run now? This season now, every year is going to be different. Mm -hmm. Government is constantly changing things. Right. You know, trying to tweak stuff, get it right. Uh -huh. um, season generally runs from, say, Memorial Day weekend to somewhere right around Labor Day, uh -huh. maybe a little after, you know. And, you know, it's one of those things where you definitely want to check the regulations. You know, they change often. Yeah, because the sizes go up. And the sizes go limits up. And changes limits and stuff go like that. down. Yeah. Everything yeah. changes. Uh, you can go to New Jersey Fish and Game website. You know, it's generally pretty updated. And, uh, you know, you can call the tackle shops down here. You know, we got our boat from Fisherman's Den, which is the only boat rental here. So if you want to rent a boat, <laughs> you're you. coming. Uh, you got a bite? No, I got a little oh, bit of grass. I thought I had a bite. Yep. Oh, that was my bite I missed. That's what it was. I've definitely got a bite. <laughs> now, what's different about this bite is it's not coming off the bottom at all. <laughs> oh, uh, it came off the hook. <laughs> well, every now and then you lose one. Yeah. I think we got one. Yep. Yep. Feels a little better. Yeah. Yeah, good fish. We got this one on a little heavier leader, so we'll just flip them in. You can see it. <laughs> They're hard to catch. Sure are. Hold on. This guy was laying out here in the mud. Yeah, look at that. Mud bottom. That's a better fish. Yep. You know, you got those pliers there? Yep. Yeah, this one's got it. Deep, but not you know, mm -hmm. not terrible deep. Oh, I got one too. Good. Oh, almost. 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 There you go. Yeah. Put him back. Him on the top hook this time, Steve. Yeah. He put the spear in. Yeah. These are feisty little fish. Even the, the size isn't there, but uh, another little one. Another little one. Oh. Well, they are still right in this little spot, though, aren't they? Oh yeah, they're <laughs> stacked up. <laughs> Better fish, Steve? Eh. <laughs> Light tackle. There we go. Twin of yours. Yep. Nothing like two at a time. Yep. And now for a closer look at today's tackle, Dora Valley Outdoors presents the Tackle Box. For more information about the tackle used on today's show, go to DollarValleyOutdoors.com. Well, Steve, we're here with the tackle box section of the show. I always like when a tackle box is real simple. Yes. Because that means we're catching fish on 
one item. You got it. And the item that uh, you brought down to, for me to fish with is this really interesting rig. Tell us about what we what, what actually have here. Well, it, it's really a takeoff of like the freshwater drop shot rig. Uh, down here they call it a stinger rig. Uh, fishermen who are really in the know are fishing this rig for the flounder, especially in the back bays. It'll work in the ocean if you upsize it, mm -hmm. but in the back bays and the rivers, it's deadly. Uh, really all you take is about an 18 inch piece of 10 or 12 pound tessellator material, right? You tie a swivel to the top where you'll attach your line. You tie the leader to the other end. You take and tie a dropper loop, and when you tie the dropper loop, you want to leave about Oh, about four inches for the loop. Uh -huh. So you can put a hook up there. And at the bottom, a chartreuse jig head. Any color is good, as long as it's chartreuse. And you can vary the weights of the heads if you needed to. to exactly. To Half it. ounce is a good all around weight. You can go to quarter, you can go to three eighths, you can even go to three quarters. Now the big thing about that jig head is, it's got a very light wire hook in it. It doesn't have like a big salt water hook. And we're only using a majority of the day. We probably caught 90% of our fish on six pound test today. That's right. With an ultralight rod that's four and a half or five foot long, you can't set the hook with a big thick hook. You need the light wire hooks. And, that's, and then you also, you recommend uh, for your stinger hook, uh, a red hook. Yes, I like a red hook, uh, octopus style. Uh, generally size one, one oh, two oh at the very biggest. Um, this is a finesse deal. You're not fishing heavy tackle, you're not fishing real deep water you know mm -hmm. so that's it the, the other thing that completes it is a little chartreuse grub at the bottom or a little white grub, grub. some days they like chartreuse some days they like white and then you, we can tip it with some spearing or Achilles or whatever. A spearing Achilles uh, some squid squid strip we yeah. all know what happened with the squid strip that's it was a squid strip catching fish situation yes. there that was it <laughs> but that's it okay that's the whole deal and that's the tackle box <laughs> there we go. Yeah. Looks like a nice one. Oh yeah, quite and good. Oh, there you go, that's a nicer yeah, one. Definitely nice. a better one. Yeah. There we go. Hey, I'm Bob Murray, Steve Horvath, down on the Shark River fluke fishing. Having a good time. Having a great time. Don't forget to go to our website, Del Valley Outdoors, and you can read reports and stuff that we out here. You gotta come down here, it's just fantastic. Bring the kids, it's a real easy day to get down here. We caught a ton of fish, we had a wonderful time. Stevie, I wanna thank you again. I'm Bob Murray, I'll see you on the water. Nope. It's a crab. Captain Crabby today. <laughs> After the uh, cameras were turned off and everything was put away, uh, Steve and I uh, continued to uh, fish and uh, we had a nice little spot that we uh, went over a couple of times and I was lucky enough to uh, hammer what we call a doormat and uh, it was about five and a half pound uh, big flounder. <laughs>